let's use Prolog to describe a dragon curve. And I say a dragon curve, because there are several of them. So let's focus on the most famous one, namely the Highway Dragon Curve, named after John Highway. And it arises from folding a paper strip. And this curve can be described as a sequence of L and R characters. R means fold right, and L means, of course, fold left. And the sequence describing the Highway Dragon Curve can be constructed iteratively. First, we start with R, a right fold. And for the next iteration, that is, to get the next sequence, we take the preceding sequence, whatever it was, append R, and then append the preceding sequence again, but this time in reverse order, and we also swap L and R. And we repeat the step as often as we want, okay? Now, to describe the sequence in Prolog, lists of characters are of course an ideal fit, because R and L are already characters, that is, atoms of length 1. So, let's describe this in Prolog. What is a dragon curve sequence? Well, first of all, the list consisting only of the character R is such a sequence, right? That's the simplest case. So that's simply a list with one element. And we call a list of characters also a string, okay? And further, this is also such a sequence if, well, suppose that this zero is such a sequence, then to get the next sequence, we simply describe the steps from above. First, we need to take the sequence, append something to it, and then append more to it. And that's great, right? Because we certainly know how to append something in Prolog. For instance, in Scribe Prolog, we can use the predicate append from library lists. And append is part of the working craft, a prolog for prolog, and many prolog systems have it. And in fact, writing append is often one of the first prolog exercises. So even prolog beginners know this predicate. However, using append is often a sign that there is a better solution. And especially when you see two or more calls of append in a row, then it can usually be solved more elegantly. Specifically, definite clause grammars, DCGs, are often a great fit for describing lists. In fact, they are one of the major attractions of Prolog, because they make reasoning about lists so convenient. And they let us avoid append entirely. So, to use DCGs in Scryer Prolog, we load the DCGs library. And almost all Prolog systems support DCGs. For instance, in GNU Prolog, you don't even have to load a library to use them. So, check your Prolog systems manual for more information. And we use a DCG with the predicate phrase, which takes two arguments. A grammar rule body as the first argument, and a list or partial list as the second argument. And it holds if and only if the grammar rule body describes the list in the second argument. So in this way, we can conveniently describe lists in Prolog. Now let's use DCGs for our task, that is describing a dragon curve. So let's look at the definition above. What does such a sequence look like? Well, first comes any preceding dragon curve sequence, or in fact any dragon curve sequence, such as DS0 in our case. And from procedural considerations, we know that at this point of the execution, DS0 is a list, at least with the default execution strategy. So we can use it directly as a terminal. And then, so comma in a grammar rule body means concatenation, and we read it as followed by or as and then. Well, then comes an R, right? So we write bracket open to denote the terminal, and R is a single element that comes here, okay? And since R is a character, we can equivalently also use double quotes like this which is maybe a bit more readable for a string. And then, as mentioned above, the same preceding sequence in reverse order with L and R swapped. And let's say that inf for inversion describes this. And we of course need to define it as a so-called non-terminal that we can use in a grammar rule body. So that's the sequence we're describing. Any preceding sequence followed by R, and then the preceding sequence in reverse with R and L swapped. So these must be of this form. If it is of this form, then it's a dragon curve. And in fact, there's one issue here because this works only if DS0 is instantiated. And we can make this more flexible by using the non terminal sec from library DCGs. This states DS0 is any sequence. And now we are more flexible because now we can, for example, exchange these goals like this. And this may yield different termination properties and also different performance characteristics. And we needed sec for this because if a part of a grammar rule body is a variable, then we get an instantiation error. 
Whereas if we state this is any sequence, then we get sequences as answers and so on. And as mentioned, Scryer-Prolog defines sec in its library DCGs. So that's a very simple and straightforward definition. And if your prolog system doesn't have it, you can simply copy it. So using sec to denote the sequence frees us from some procedural considerations because the zero now need not be instantiated at the time of the call. This lets us reorder goals for efficiency or better termination or different execution strategies. And it helps us to focus on the actual description. Now, we only need to define what we mean with inf, our inverted, that is reversed and swapped sequence. So let's define it as a TCG non-terminal. And we distinguish two cases based on the inductive definition of lists. First, the empty list inverted is the empty list. So we use this error operator to write the TCG rule. And we could of course write the empty list equivalently as the empty string. That's just a syntactic variant for writing the empty list. But this looks a bit unusual maybe, so let's keep it like this. So for the empty list, there's nothing to swap and nothing to reverse. And second, if you have a list with at least one folding character f and possibly further characters fs, then the list we're describing is, as mentioned above, the list in reverse order and elements swapped. So first the remaining elements fs, if any, all in reverse order and with the characters swapped, which is exactly the meaning of inf. And then, let's see the definition again, the character f must be swapped, right? So we write swap of f on the understanding that we have a non-terminal swap that describes the sequence we mean at this position. So let's define swap. Well, it's easy. If the character is R, then we mean a string with a single element, namely L. And L is swapped for R. And that's all. This is a prolog description of the highway dragon curve, because we can use it to generate sequences and also to test and to complete sequences. Therefore, we say we're describing the curve. Because it wouldn't do the code justice to say we only generate the curve. Because we can do more with it. We have a general description. And we can use it in different modes. Well, still, of course, generating the curve is maybe most interesting here. So let's ask, are there any such sequences these at all? This is called the most general query because we're asking, are there any such terms? And that's, of course, a huge attraction of logic programming that we can simply ask the system are there any such cases at all? And the system will tell us, as answers, everything it finds as logical consequences of the description. So for instance, in this case, we immediately get as the first solution, the string R, that is a right fold. So we imagine we have a paper strip like this, and then we fold it to the right, like this. That's R, denoting a right fold. And the second solution is RRL, a right fold, then another right fold, then a left fold. Here's the third solution. The next one, next one, one more. Now the strings are already truncated a bit because they are so long. Another solution. So Pollock simply reports these solutions one after the other. One more, another one. Now it looks increasingly like the famous highway dragon curve and it already takes more time to find longer solutions because the length of the sequence increases exponentially and so on. So, that's a dragon curve described with prolog and it's built in grammar formalism, DCGs.